It's March, and we say, let the madness begin. I'm Roz Goldon Wood. She is Ice Young. That's Cassandra Negley. And we are all here for Yahoo Sports, breaking down the 2024 Women's NCAA tournament. It's about to take center stage. Like, literally, all eyes are on women's basketball. And we got you. We're going to break down the brackets and give you all the information that you need. But Ice, there's just so much star power uh, and storylines to follow in this season's tournament. So what's something that you can't wait to see? I'm excited about the fearless freshmen. I've nicknamed them. Yes, I'm kind of <laughs> that corny. But Juju Watkins, Hannah Hidalgo, Malaysia Fuwiley, Madison Booker, Michaela Williams. There are so many freshmen across the country that are taking the world by storm. We often talk about focusing on the vets this time mm -hmm. of year. It's really the freshmen that are coming and knocking people off. The game is in good hands, mm -hmm. even after we have some stellar talents graduate and also have already chosen to give up their season, uh, their extra season in college and go to the WNBA. Now, what's exciting you? the most Cass I am excited about all the teams coming to Albany I mean that Albany 2 regional is incredible I grew up in central New York I've covered girls high school basketball state champions in Albany so I'm excited to go back there and see what it has in store for us well I think for me I'm just gonna take like a macro kind of bigger look at it I'm so excited for women's college basketball to really just relish in the moment. If it was exploding and, and brewing last season right now, uh, it's a moment where like everybody knows that women's basketball is that girl, mm -hmm. you know, and the ratings are up. It's been really exciting to see women's college basketball games on multiple occasions, you know, even outrate head-to-head -head NBA games. I think that NIL has um, contributed to this, in increasing talent, great jobs by networks and platforms to cover it. Um, more parity in the game, great coaching. All of this is meeting the moment, and this isn't a moment. I think this is um, the tip of the iceberg for what's to come, and not only in just women's basketball, but women's sports. So um, let's get right into this thing because there is so much to cover. Uh, the top number one seed, South Carolina, they're undefeated. A little bit of deja vu here. Uh, because they went to last year's tournament and headed into it undefeated as well, made it all the way to the Final Four, end up facing up against Iowa. Caitlin Clark busts them open for 41 <laughs> points against their great defense, and their offense also went ice cold. They were 4 for 20 from 3. So now they come back into it this season. People labeled them a rebuilding year. They had graduated a lot of talent, but somehow they seem like they've even improved, Cass. So why might this season's South Carolina team be able to pull it off and go undefeated to a championship. Yeah, a lot of people said in the offseason that Dawn Staley was reloading. I like to say she's always loading because she <laughs> lost all those starters, right? But she brings in people off the bench, and she adds to Hina Pow Pow from Oregon. That's really where this team is better. She's hitting from deep. South Carolina is only hitting about two more threes per game, but they're hitting about 40% versus 31% last year. That's huge for South Carolina because, as you said, like, that lost them a championship mm. in a way. So not having a Leah Boston was supposed to put them back, but really Don Staley just corrected what happened last year and they're ready for another title. Mm. Absolutely, so all right, we get it, they're good, they're undefeated, um, they're dominating not only on defense, but now got better on the offensive end. Um, so I, I'm gonna come to you with the hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think um, is someone that could possibly beat South Carolina? Mm, could possibly is a very strong word there. <laughs> could possibly. I'm going to say Texas, though, which wouldn't happen until we get to the Final Four. But I just think mm -hmm. Texas has that 94 feet of held defense. Vic Schaefer and Dawn Staley, I miss those matchups in the SEC. It'll come back next year, but maybe we get to see it in the tournament. Uh, but I think Texas could have the depth and the defense, which is what you need this time of year to pull off big wins. All right, well, how about within this region? Mm. You know, perhaps maybe look at Notre Dame at the the number two seed. Now, they actually started off the season playing each other in Paris. Yep. And look, South Carolina whooped on them. They lost by almost 30, <laughs> but there's been growth since there. And uh, to end the season, North uh, Notre Dame has won eight straight, including five against ranked opponents mm. on their way to the ACC championship. They lost Kylie Watson. Mm. So, I, how do they you know, make up for the mounting adversary, the adversity, the injuries, but also how much have they improved? Yeah, I mean, it's been a tremendous story. They're led, obviously, by one of the most energizing, exciting freshmen of the year in Hannah Hidalgo. Uh, but losing Kylie Watson is huge because this team only played seven players through the majority of the season. So now they're about down to six. So you think tournament time, having to play a couple of games to get to South Carolina, and then you're playing them with only maybe six or seven with a depth a roster is just tough to win. 
Um, I say what I give them a fighting chance for, though, one is their high IQ. They play tremendous basketball underneath Neil Ivy. I think she's one that is just schematically one of the best in the country. Obviously, they have the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and Hannah Hidalgo, and defense needs to travel. So I think you've got a plan around her. Uh, and then there are very good pieces around them. Maddie Wellspelt has won. So I, I think they're a good and built and deep team, just not sure that they'll have enough by the time they see South Carolina to upset them. I think, you know, what would be most exciting mm -hmm. about that matchup is at the beginning of the season, it was Hannah Hidalgo's first game. Yeah. Everyone's going over to Paris. Mm -hmm. It's a different environment. She doesn't know what's going on. Hannah Hidalgo now leads the nation in steals. Mm. She has a whole season of experience. Like that would be a fun matchup to see. Although I agree, like I don't, I don't know if Notre Dame will be able to get there. Yeah, she's not a soft, she's not a freshman anymore. She's yeah. really a yeah. sophomore at this point yep. of the year. Well, I also really want to highlight. It's kind of odd to call a coach an X factor, but I mean. The job that Dawn Staley has done this season for South Carolina, and Cassie did such a nice job at the beginning of kind of highlighting her strategical dominance in a team that was labeled rebuilding and then showcasing how they were able to still be un undefeated. But I'm talking more about her ability as a leader, mm. um, at her emotional and intellectual IQ mm -hmm. um, to develop and nurture young women and and honestly the to be a guardian of young black women mm -hmm. um, and ma majority young black women on this team and the nuances of that i'll point out just like two moments that i have found really important this season that stood out uh, you look at that paris game and a moment that went viral and we all laughed about it was um, when they won, they were taking pictures in the court and, and some of the players were throwing up hand signals and we had a chuckle uh, coach said bop them on the hand and said we don't do that here <laughs> But there was a nuance there. There was an important uh, awareness that she wanted her team to have and young women to have. And then I'll also look at the SEC championship. Obviously, there was a scuffle between South Carolina and LSU. And I just saw Coach's readiness mm -hmm. to handle the situation. She didn't send some player over there post-game to handle that interview and have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. She stepped up immediately de-escalated de the situation, immediately reframed the conversation. I even saw her protecting LSU's player in Flage Johnson and pointing out, you know, hey, she came and spoke to me and apologized for the situation. When your coach is locked in like that, I think that trickles down certainly to a group of young women and on a bright lights, big stage moment like the NCAA tournament, I certainly think that that helps them meet the moment. Mm. I also think too, often we look at these great coaches and we think they're role models of young players. Dawn is a role model for other coaches. There have been tons of coaches across the country that yep. say we're looking up to her, we're learning from Dawn. She's experienced. So I also just think it's amazing that she's leading players and coaches to get better and she brings others with her. Absolutely. All right, guys, um, we've talked about a lot of great talent, especially all that South Carolina is bringing to the table. Who do you have coming out of this region? Do you see anyone beating South Carolina, Cass? Uh, South Carolina is undefeated. Like I, my favorite thing about them is they find the ways to win mm. the SEC semifinals, that championship game, the regular season game against LSU. I'm taking South Carolina. Yeah, in dawn we trust. That's it. <laughs> in dawn, I trust. Yeah, yeah. This this seems like uh, they've been doing it all season, and they'll get to the final four. I got South Carolina. All right, let's take it to the Albany Two region, where all eyes are on Caitlin Clark, the most electric player in all of college basketball. She's transcendent. Uh, she's elevating the women's game. She's changing mindsets. This is big business, big ticket sales, big ratings. But boy, there's a chance that America may not even get to see her in Iowa all of the to tournament's length because Iowa's path to the Final Four and out of their section of the bracket is actually insane <laughs> so it's not a path it's a war zone they yeah. gotta they gotta claw their Call way it. through it yeah we need some warriors maybe jesus <laughs> needs to intercede right, right. too <laughs> so Cass, how do they overcome this tough path what are you seeing there well first of all my favorite stat as i was looking at this region the other day is that four teams in the bracket were ranked top three in the ap poll now obviously the ap poll doesn't go into net rankings or where these teams are seated but it does say a lot about what most of the country thinks are the best teams so you have number two, UCLA. They were the second best team in the country for a while. Number three, LSU, reigning champs. Number four, K-State, split the series with Iowa this year. I think what's huge for Iowa, because if you look at that second round game, we had all talked that West Virginia and Princeton could be a problem, but Iowa's going to be playing in Iowa City. A few of us have been at Carver Hawkeye Arena, and I will tell you, it is wild to walk the concourse, and it is just black and gold. Wow. There are no visiting fans. 
that that arena just plays with Caitlin Clark and the rest of the Hawkeyes. They have them on a string. It's like audio levels. You can feel it go up. That'll be huge for Iowa to kind of carry that momentum into the Sweet 16. And, and really tough for other opponents to come in there, uh, you know, for those first couple games. So, um, but I think it makes it all more dramatic because Iowa really <laughs> seems to be gamers. Mm -hmm. you, know, you think about last season in the Final Four coming in against South Carolina. They were absolutely the underdog. South Carolina was an undefeated team. Mm -hmm. And then C Clark goes off for 41. Mm -hmm. I mean, just really recognizing the moments and upset them. Mm -hmm. Even you think about uh, the Big Ten tournament, they didn't come in as the top seed. In mm -hmm. fact, in the championship game, they had a force overtime. Caitlin Clark drops 30 of her 34 points in the final 24 minutes. <laughs> To, to push that game into Big Ten championship territory for them and take the title. And there are just some players, when you watch them, you're like, you know what? She's got it. Mm. And I'll point to one more moment that stood out to me. It was when she was going for Kelsey Plum's NCAA women's um, scoring record. And she needed eight points. And what did she do? Sometimes when records are getting broken, players ease into the moment. Now she bust that moment down. <laughs> no. She had a career high, 49 points. And of course the, the record breaking moment was on a logo three. Mm. So I think Caitlin's a gamer. Iowa steps up, they rally around her. And even though it's a hard path, I think it's fertile grounds for a magical, magical run. But okay, I know we're all, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in the Caitlin show, but Isis, mm. there's a lot going on in the Albany 2 regional. And what else do you have your, your eyes on? Yeah, well, I love upsets this time of year. Let, let's be honest, like we come to March and we're looking for the upsets. Oh yeah. I have picked a 6-11 upset that I think y'all will like. It'll be Louisville is a six seed, Middle Tennessee State is the 11th seed. That's I have awesome. Middle Tennessee why, knocking why? off Louisville. They have a packed starting <laughs> five. They have a historic <laughs> coach in Rick, Rick Onsel who just wins, knows how to win. Mm -hmm. Uh, but more importantly, with Louisville, their big players, Livia Cochran, in the post. Well, Middle Tennessee State has the shot blocker, one of the best in the country inside. And I just think they're going to be really good matchups. All right. I love a little upset fever mm. here. Are you leaving it there? We're leaving it there. Okay. I was like, you want to get more spicy? <laughs> Hold on, though. If Louisville does advance, we get to see Haley Van Lith and LSU against Louisville in the second oh. round. And so, LSU's reaction was interesting, yes. right? Spicy, yes. Even spicy. if you don't get that upset in your bracket going, you're going to be excited to see what's going oh, on. Oh, 100%. Okay, well, are you guys getting spicy with your picks, advancing to the final four out of this side of the bracket? Who do you have coming out? I, my gut wants to say UCLA. I like Lauren Betts. I think they're, you know, a pretty complete team, but I'm going to go Iowa. Oh, I'm I going know. with UCLA. Okay. With UCLA. I love head coach Corey Close. Yep. I think that she is good in crunch time. Uh, and I love Charisma Osborne. She's yes. a senior. It's this time where you just do not want to go away. She's got good company inside. You mentioned Lauren Betts. Um, I think UCLA can pull it off against Iowa. I do. I like that pick. Mm. I mean, obviously, I love Pac-12 teams, but I also think <laughs> to Charisma Osborne also, this is the moment she came back for, and you want to see UCLA get over the hump a little bit because mm -hmm. they've always had the potential. Mm -hmm. I say all that to say I'm still going Iowa. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I say all that to say, but I also am just, you know, listen, I, I, I think they've got, like I said, they're gamers. Um, there's an opportunity for a magical run. Caitlin's always been money yeah. when the lights are bright as she shows up and I think she's gonna give the people what they want There's and I'll be here for it pressure it either builds diamonds or bust pipes I that will be Caitlin's storyline this March all right let's take a look at the Portland 3 region and it comes in with the USC Trojans with the number one seed absolutely winning the Pac-12 tournament championship help them secure that top spot and then Ohio State UConn Virginia Tech round out the top four seeds so what I want to point out with USC um, I believe that Pac-12 championship game was really important for the team. Juju popped. She dropped 51 points on Stanford at Stanford. I played there. I played for Tara Vanderveer. I knew the next time they saw Juju, they were going to throw everything at her. One of the strengths of Stanford is when they lo lock in on a scouting report defense against you, they're going to take away what you do best. So I wasn't surprised that Juju went for nine points and two for 15 from the field. But what did stand out was Harvard transfer, the vet Mackenzie Forbes coming through with 26 points, uh, a diversity of ranges that she shot from. Um, Marshall always brings the energy, especially 
especially on the gra on the glass, double double there. And I think for USC, it's, you just need momentum heading into the tournament. It was a great signal. We are a team, mm -hmm. and it's Juju's excellent, mm -hmm. but we are a team that's ready for the tournament. Um, now I talked a little bit about Juju here, but there's so many great scores in this region, mm -hmm. Cass. Um, how talent loaded? is this region. If you want to see incredible individual performances, this is the region for you. You mentioned Juju, she's second behind Caitlin Clark. We have Elizabeth Kitley, she's sixth. Syracuse Deja Fair, she's 10th. I know we're gonna get into Syracuse more, but <laughs> I was in the Dome for a few games and it is so fun to watch her. She can pull up a little bit like Clark, really bring Syracuse with her and, and come back and win some games. You have Paige Beckers, which we can't forget about for UConn. The last time we saw her in the tournament, she literally carried that Huskies team to the title game. And that's not even including Georgia Amor for Virginia Tech. And I have one more, main fifth year senior guard, Ann Simon ranks 41st. Okay. Mm. So that is four of the top 12 scores and six players in the top 50. Mm. Okay. I love all the guards you just listed. <laughs> the only Elizabeth Kitley is the only post player. Otherwise, it's a guard, it's That's a guard true. region. That's true. <laughs> you know what? We got some guards up here, so I like that. Um, I know you love a spicy matchup, mm. and I know you played for Syracuse. Mm. So I'm going to look at your former team. They come in at Syracuse at the number six seed. And I want to understand their potential here because potentially with advancing, you know, they could see UConn there. Mm -hmm. um, and UConn's been a team that's been riddled with injury, but they still got Paige Beckers. Yeah. What are you seeing coming? First, I'll start with Syracuse and just head coach Felicia Leggett-Jack. I mean, she took Buffalo to the Sweet 16 in 2018, which wasn't that long ago. ACC Coach of the Year, and then you mentioned De'Asha Fair. She is second in active all-time scores behind Caitlin Clark, over 3,500 career points. So I think she can drop 40 anytime she decides that she wants to drop 40. Right. With Syracuse, it'll be end company. Will they show up and end company will be there. And I think for UConn, it is so important that Aaliyah Edwards has a fantastic tournament. We are going to focus on Paige. She is going to be the one that everyone tries to lock down. But will Aaliyah Edwards keep everyone honest in the post and score? She has had a fantastic senior campaign. I've really enjoyed watching her this year. I think it'll be a big tournament for her. I think in general, when you talk about the tournament, mm. the rest of the team, role players, mm. and I also think X factors, someone outside of the scouting report that maybe you didn't expect stepping up, that's where upsets happen. Yep. Mm. You know, that's where um, March Madness happens. So, I mean, star players are often scouted for by, by this point. You wanted to add in, Cass? Well, I just wanted to say, speaking of Aaliyah Edwards, we get masked Aaliyah this Ooh. tournament because Ooh. of that broken nose, <laughs> yes. and we know how players play with the mask on, so. Yeah. Dangerous. Okay, guys, final four picks. Who's coming out of this region? Who you got? USC. USC. Yeah, I, I would love for Juju to make this Cinderella historic story. I think she's got everybody behind her. I think she's the next face of women's college basketball. I certainly do. I, I would take it even further, the next face of college basketball, mm. men's or women's. So there I'm going go. with USC. Um, and, of course, I think coming out of the Pac-12, too, as somebody who's been really close to the conference and covering it for years, and especially this season, teams coming out of there are really battle-tested. Yeah. All right, now we'll take a look at the Portland Four region where Texas comes in at the number one seed, Red Hot. They've won nine of their last ten games. They're led by a freshman, but also she's the co-Big 12 Player of the Year in Madison Booker. And they edged out Stanford for that seed. Stanford came in at number two. NC State Gonzaga comes in at three and four, respectively here. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised Texas got the one seed over Stanford? Because, you know, I'm a Stanford alum, mm -hmm. um, and but I... I thought maybe they might be rewarded for still winning the uh, regular season championship, even though they dropped the conference tournament championship. And they were playing in the Pac-12, where they sent seven teams to the tournament. And all season long, the Pac-12 has been the most dominant conference in the country. Um, so what was key to you about Texas's run? I think it was just how they finished the season. The fact that they finished with the Big 12 championship really solidified them getting the one seed. But I mean, what Vic Schaefer has been able to do with this team has been incredible after losing Rory Harmon. Rory Harmon is an AP point guard, an All-American point guard. They lost her early in the season and then somehow still finish as a one seed. And yes, we can say amazing things about Madison Booker, the first freshman to ever win the Big 12 Player of the Year award. But at the same time, it's it, Shay Holly, it's Shaylee Gonzalez. I mean, and it's Vic, Vic Schaefer's defense. That 94 feet of hell, nobody wants to play against it. So I think for them as a one seed, it gave them that because they won the championship. And I'm just so impressed with what they've been able to do after losing Rory Harmon. I mean, if they had Rory, I don't even, I, I'm not sure what it would look like for the rest of the country. It'd be yeah. scary. 
Well, you oh, yeah, they'd be my top team. For yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Title contender. Right, and don't we trust, but, like, Vic would have been a cool... <laughs> no, I don't know, we might have switched <laughs> that up. I thought you like, would trust. <laughs> right, and Vic would. trust. You know, it's interesting you bring up Texas's defense, because I'll also give an argument for Stanford here, too, as, mm. a, as a team that can be absolutely tough on the defensive end in a different style. Mm. You know, instead of uh, havoc all over the court, it's more of a cerebral scout defense, and when they lock in, I find that to be a great strength. Not to mention their rebounding ability with Cameron Brink and Kiki Iri often, um, you know, anchoring the the paint offensively with points, with rebounds, and certainly with Brink and her blocks. <laughs> um, but for me, the whole thing for Stanford is mental. Mm. They have to show up as the best version of themselves. Last season, they flamed out in a disappointing way, also in the Pac-12 tournament, and then they didn't even make it out of Maples Pavilion, their home court. So this year, you know, they've already had a stumble, a missed opportunity in the Pac-12 tournament, and now they're gonna go back home and, and defend home court again. Um, I, I think Cameron Brink is really important because she sets a tone emotionally for this team. She is the fire and the fierceness that they need. But, but Cass, You've got your eyes on a young Iowa State team as perhaps the darlings. I do. I'm going to disappoint you. I have them going past Stanford in okay. my bracket. Absolutely. Ooh. I like the madness. Okay. I, I like this team. They're young. They have nothing to lose. Like, whatever happens with this young team, they're going to come back for two to three years with that experience. You have Audie Crooks. You have Addie Brown absolutely destroying. And what I really like is they have Emily Ryan at point guard. Mm -hmm. That's a steady fifth year senior who can lead a young team and maybe make some noise. Mm. I like them. Mm. Do you like them enough to say they're coming out of the bracket and into the final four? Oh, into the final four? I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I they like them, not Cinderella's love. Cinderella's going home at like 1 a.m. <laughs> Okay, all right, so, dang, that's so sad. <laughs> not, not, to, not them turning back into a pumpkin. Right. <laughs> I mean, this, all right, so Oof, who do a lot. have coming out of this region into the Final Four? I got Texas. I don't see how you can bet against 94 no. feet of hell. No. You need Love defense, defense this time of year. I don't know how you could go against the winningest coach in the history of, of college basketball in Tara Vanderveer, uh, but I'm going to just give it to my girls at Stanford, and, and let's see if they could step up to the challenge because the potential has been there. In, in great spurts this season. It has. Okay, guys, we spent most of this show breaking down the brackets. Now let's take it right to the final four. Who do you have in it, and how does it work out for a champion? Ice, pressure's on. Okay, I got to <laughs> go first. It's fine. All right, we've got South Carolina staying undefeated because, again, in Dawn we trust. We have Texas because that hook and defense is going to be tough for anyone else to beat, and I think the only team that can beat that is South Carolina. On the other side, I have UCLA being Iowa. I'm big on UCLA. I'm big on head coach Corey Close. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we have USC. I trust Juju to get her team to a Final Four in her freshman year. I've got South Carolina and I've got USC getting okay. to the championship. And then I have South Carolina winning a national championship. All right. Yeah. I've got them having an undefeated season. How does your Final Four and championship work out, Cass? <sighs> okay. I went all chalk, which I don't trust. But I have South Carolina. I agree. Undefeated. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to root against them. Uh, Texas, love that defense. I've always been high on Vic Schaefer's defense. On the other side, we've got Iowa because Caitlin Clark, I think she can carry them. And then USC, same for Juju Watkins. I think she's the star there. Um, I also have a South Carolina USC final, mm -hmm. but I went with USC. Ooh, okay. Oh, wow. Why did you think USC yeah. would be able to beat South Carolina? I think it's really, really hard to go undefeated an entire season. And especially in March, there's so much pressure. I just, wow. I wouldn't be surprised if South Carolina won, but that is, it's tough. Mm. That is bold to take SC all the way to the chip and have them get flamed out by a, fr a star freshman. I Woo. know that, and but USC, you don't need to call me USC out like that. has shown me our good team. Okay, <laughs> so I'll finish it out too. In my final four, I got Iowa and USC matching up on one side. I actually think experience goes a long way in these types of things, and Iowa's experience in the Final Four last season will help them overcome USC, and USC will later take this moment to build off of into the future and, and next season, but this is Iowa's time. And then South Carolina and Stanford on the other side. Um, unfortunately, South Carolina's depth and defense will be too much for Stanford to overcome, so then I will have Iowa and South Carolina in the championship, a rematch of a Final Four matchup from last season. 
which was really the championship last season. Oh, I, think that, I wouldn't us, say yeah, that. That's yeah. what's up. It was. Oh, I would agree. Thank would you, agree. Cass. I yeah, got it you. was really what we all wanted to see. I'm yeah, not going to do that to y'all, LSU. <laughs> I'm not going to disrespect your championship, LSU. That's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> but um, this is a beautiful matchup if it happens. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people would love to see this, this beautiful story of, of Caitlin Clark going out on top with the championship. But I, I'm with you here mm -hmm. in that in Dawn We Trust, South Carolina gets it done, and Dawn collects a third championship for the Gamecocks. March is a time where stars are made, and special players captivate us. It's time to see who is charging the game. Brought to you by Acura, and spotlight some players who are energizing their teams and can put up historical performances in this year's tournament. Ice, who you got? Ooh, I got a Jersey girl, a guard. You don't want to see her. She's a dog, not a D-O-G, a D-A-W-G. A dog. Dog. Yeah. Hannah Hidalgo <laughs> is a dog. I see what you did there. <laughs> I try. I try. <laughs> But honestly, seriously, I just think the way in which she changes the game with her defense, she affects the game on the defensive side first, and then you have to try and guard her. I think we're going to see the bright lights and her shine, and we're going to see her dog mentality shine in the tournament. How about you, Cass? I'm going with Madison Booker mm. for Texas. I mean, this is a player. She comes in as a freshman. She's supposed to be playing on the wing. And then she has to switch to point guard when Rory Harmon leaves and is injured. Um, a solid scorer, a great passer. I talked to Vic Schaefer and Maddie earlier this season, and Vic Schaefer told me he thought without a doubt that she was probably one of the best freshmen that he's ever coached. And that list is really, really long. So I think she's really gonna star. Texas is gonna make a deep run with her. Okay, well then I'm, I'm gonna take it back to the West Coast, and I'm gonna go with Juju Watkins. I, I actually think, as crazy as this sounds, that Juju Watkins is still flying under the radar. And I mean that in the way that, mark my words, Juju Watkins is the next transcendent player in college basketball, period. Um, she's already one of the most skilled players. What stands out to me is her ability to score from different ranges, off the bounce, her change of pace. You know, she's really great going right. Her footwork, her lower body and leg strength is really strong and, and, and that gives her a foundation that she works from. In fact, she actually works with esteemed NBA coach Phil Handy of the Lakers. And I mean, this is a guy who's working with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. This is who she's working with. I immediately see a comparison to Maya Moore, but I've liked when I've heard Diana Taurasi's name thrown in there. I like that a lot because I think she's that level of a winner. Mm. And when I watch her as a freshman, she's not afraid of being a leader. Um, she's got great courage about her. I've watched games where she has had poor shooting nights and she's been able to get to the free throw line and find other ways to affect the game. And I'll point this out. She's packing out Galen Center yeah. in Los Angeles. That is very hard to do. There are professional teams, sports teams, that are struggling for attention in LA. I was at a weekend mat matinee, I think a Sunday afternoon game, and the place was filled. And this whole thing is just beginning, guys. Like, Juju Mania is absolutely on the way, and I think it could be bigger than anything we've ever seen. So I'm going with Juju. We gotta put Juju Mania on a t-shirt. I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unlock your energy with the all-electric ZDX. Order now at Acura.com.